Welcome to the experimental video for experiment 3, the synthesis of ferrocene. You will start with a 3 neck flask set up as shown here. For all your stoppers as well as all the connections to the dropping funnel and your balloon set up as shown here, you will need to use some grease to ensure that there is a tight seal and fit between all the connections in your setup. Remember to add your stirrer bar in your round bottom flask so long before adding your other reagents. One additional clamp and stopper that you might require is a stopper at the top of your dropping funnel as well as a clamp at the top of your dropping funnel. Just a final check to remind you of all the aspects you require. You need a stopper, you need your balloon, you need a dropping funnel as well as your stirrer. Measure of 30 milliliter of DME solvent to add to your three neck flask. Then using the same funnel, you will transfer this to from your DME from your measuring cylinder to your flask, as shown here. Next, try to work as accurately as you possibly can to weigh 10 grams of potassium hydroxide pellets, um, around about 10 grams, in other words, within 10.5, no more than 10.5 gram um, should be sufficient. Okay. Now, finally ground your potassium hydroxide pellets so that we may add it to our already stirring mixture of DME. You will need to do this quickly since the hyd potassium hydroxide pellets are quite hygroscopic and will become more and more difficult to crush them and add them to your reagent mixture with time. Add your crushed potassium hydroxide pellets into your stirring round bottom flask as much as you possibly can. And then you will allow it to stir until all the potassium hydroxide has dissolved. <clears throat> if your pellets weren't wet, this would be quite this will occur quite quickly. If they were not wet, then your pellets won't ever really dissolve fully until your ligand is added. Then you can take a cut off of 45 minutes of stirring, then you can pr proceed to the next step in the synthesis. You leave this now until it either dissolves or if 45 minutes have passed then you may move on to the next step of the synthesis. Next we collect nitrogen in our balloon setup um, for purging purposes as follows. Uh, you would collect these from a demonstrator or one of the lab managers on the day of your practical. To purge your system, you open the tap of your balloon and you gently lift one of the opposite taps on your system while the balloon is open. <clears throat> this allows the balloon to purge the system systematically, thrust the air, the nitrogen gas into the system while forcing out the other gases on the other side, hence purging. Now we will collect our cyclopentadiene, our monomer, which has distilled for a few hours now. We will need to collect a certain amount, about 2.8 grams, which you need to convert to milliliters using a density calculator, calculation before coming to the lab on the day. This we have done now, so now we know what the correct density is we require, and hence what it was. Before adding this demonomer into the reagent uh, bath, we will first again purge our system with nitrogen. <clears throat> 
once the system is purged you can add your cyclopenta dye in into the system and again stop it next we will need to weigh our iron chloride our ferrous chloride is then dissolved in approximately 15 milliliter of dmso DMSO is dimethyl sulfoxide. Again, this acts as a solvent, hence you need to use only approximately 15 milliliter. If you need more to dissolve your iron chloride, you can use more. This will be added to the dropping funnel at the top of your three naked flask set setup. Before adding your iron chloride DMSO solution, purge your system again using your balloon uh, with nitrogen. Now add your ferrous chloride DMSO mixture at the top of your dropping funnel. Ensure that you get all the ferrous chloride from your beaker transferred to the dropping funnel and that your dropping rate is about one milliliter per minute. In other words, approximately 10 drops per 10 seconds. So about a drop a second should be sufficient. This is of course very approximately. So just try your best to have that dropping rate. To get in your funnel essentially just a slow dropping rate is what we're after a slow addition of our reagent to keep the reagent conditions dilute to allow for product formation which is what we're after after you've added all your iron chloride in dmso you can remove the dropping funnel from the top uh, the middle um, part of your three neck flask and you can replace it with a cap a glass stopper for the rest of the stirring we also purge the system again one last time before we let it stir for another 30 to 40 minutes collect your six molar hcl as well as your 50 gram ice Remember 50 gram ice is a relative amount, about 50 milliliter in a 100 milliliter beaker would be a good indication or 50 milliliter in a that beaker would be enough. Add the two together since you will add the constituents of your three naked flask in this beaker to stir further. So it needs to be quite a large volume beaker. Detach your three naked flask as shown in the video. And keep all the constituents in solution. Try to keep them well elevated in the solution and then transfer it from your flask to the beaker to allow for the stirring to continue. This of course is this of course quenches the reaction and stops the reaction from taking place any further. You can use distilled water to transfer some of your for from some of your product that is still left over in your reaction vessel or your three naked flask should not be able to transfer everything in the initial transfer to your beaker. Another pro tip: wash your glassware immediately after use. This will make it much easier to clean it instead of leaving it to dry out and then after the practical trying to clean it. Clean it immediately while it's, the rest is still stirring. Finally, you will now dry and wash your product over a sintered glass funnel. The reason you're using a sintered funnel is simply because for introductory purposes, now you're introduced to a sintered funnel. It's a different kind of Buchner. It's still a Buchner, just sintered instead of a vacuum or instead of a filter paper. And then you wash with four aliquots of 50 milliliter distilled water. Again, you can reuse distilled water to rinse out your reagent flask or your reagent beaker to transfer all your product <coughs> before you start washing. 
and you wash with four aliquots of 15 milliliters each. Essentially until whatever comes out at the bottom of your washing remains clear. As you see initially the washing is not completely clear, it is quite murky and all sorts of colors until the water or until the whatever is washed through remains colorless as the clear water what that is washed or well, is put into the system in the beginning remains clear when it comes out then you have washed your product clean you will thereafter air dry your product and only air dry since heat will cause sublimation you will now allow your product to air dry um, on a watch glass somewhere in your fume hood where it will be safe from the vacuum constantly being pulled in your fume hood. Take your spatula to remove it from the sintered glass funnel. Do not be afraid to scratch the sintered funnel. It will not come off. So you can scratch the surface of it to get off your product. And you will leave this for 30 about 30 minutes should be sufficient. Of course, there is our crude ferrocene product. After it has dried, you will remember to weigh it for your yield calculations. As always, please remember to discard your waste in the appropriate waste container for this practical. Um, they will be marked, as always, at the back of your laboratory somewhere. There's also one for your gloves and your paper towels. There is our mass. We recorded a mass of 4.04 grams after drying. It should be an off orange color, sometimes containing some dark black um, bits, which are of course impurities. Thank you for watching.